Hello, welcome to the Second Nature Show. My name is Dom Campbell. I am here with my show co-host, Alex Coble Frakes and Donna Masterson. And today we are excited to bring Jesse Rosenmeyer to the show. She is an independent consultant for Arbon Products. And so welcome, Jesse. We're happy to he- have you Thank here. Thank you. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. So I'm kind of curious. Um, Alex told me a little bit about you, and um, I'd like to know a little bit more. What really inspired you to do what you do? I actually have always had um, just gut issues and skin issues my entire life. And a couple years ago, I was having such problems that we actually ended up doing a colonoscopy and seeing if I had um, celiac or Crohn's or anything like that. And celiac is pretty prevalent on my mom's side, which is kind of how that one popped. Um, and then after that, I just really had to start tuning into how I was eating and what I was eating. And I noticed that when they had told me I had a gluten intolerance, I really watched that. Then my skin issues started to clear up too. I have had eczema. I mean, I can't remember a time when... I did not have huge problems. I would wake up when I was little and just have scratched my legs raw and there'd be blood in the sheets and all of that. So it's pretty extreme, but that was kind of the tipping point of me thinking like, I really need to look at what I'm using and doing. Good. I have a question for you. I want to know how does um, the inspiration that you got for starting to sell the Arbon products, how does that inspiration, how does that affect your health and your wellness? I have been a product user for a couple of years and a, my like upline, we have become just a lot closer and I kind of started looking at it and she's like, you are just a naturally out there person. You're not shy. You go <laughs> to things like, <laughs> and you have a great story to tell. You should be making this work for you also. So that's kind of how I got into that. And then from there too, just really doing more research because I was helping other people. I was connecting to other people and seeing what's all out there for that. Um, really opened my eyes to a lot of new things. I also too knew if I had to do this and share it with people, I would probably be more committed to making those big changes. Um, I am a true Iowa farm girl and grew up on meat, bread and potatoes. And I um, am still a farm girl. I live with my boyfriend on his farm in Southwest Iowa. And so that's very prevalent for me. So we've really had to change some of our attitudes toward things. He now loves spinach, which is crazy to think of, but um, I know Alex kind of wanted to know some of that stuff too, of just how my background too really affects it. I still have a huge place in my heart about that, but I definitely think too, knowing what's in what we're using and in our food is just as important um, as the people who are growing it and making all of those products. And I just have noticed such a huge difference that to me, it's like, I need you to know this because how do you not almost, or like, how do you not know what's so bad sometimes that you're putting on your body or in your body? If that answers your question. (laughs) I have a question, Jesse, we kind of go way back. Some (laughs) like way back. And I would not have pegged you as someone to get involved with health and wellness products when we were in college, right? We were all a little bit wild, but definitely didn't seem like you're seen. So I'm curious, what got you to even try them in the first place? I, it kind of started with this skincare and I got into that and like, I honestly kind of mocked it at first because like some of our big things are like, we're gluten-free, we're vegan, we're plant-based. And I'm like, oh dear Lord. Like Alex and I in college, like, yes, we got along, but we definitely never agreed. We just were smart <laughs> enough to know to agree to disagree. Um, like I said, that like, just Iowa farm girl, born and bred, all of that, still so proud of that, but also... My dad is pretty, um, I would say sometimes pretty progressive on just education and all of those things. So that definitely tapped into it. He takes pride in doing things right um, back home. So that was a big part of it. But looking back now, had you told me in college that I would be talking to Alex on something like this and talking about how my journey has changed, I never would have done that. Um, I do think there needs to be not a level of distrust, but just like questioning of, okay, well, what are your ingredients in everything? What are you putting out there? How you're marketing it? Like you're marketing this to small kids or to people who you know are vulnerable to those things. And that, like, that is kind of super shady. Um, The kind of opinionated side of me 
wants to find the right answer and the stubborn side. And so that too kind of drove that of once I learned there's information out there, I wanted to know more about it. Were you skeptical when you first started checking out Arbonne? Were you skeptical? Like, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but my products work just as well. Like, was there any of that before you tried it for yourself? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Especially <laughs> because, um, like it is more expensive sometimes to do things the right way because so much more goes into it. The research, just, um, the formulas and all that. But then after I started using it, I'm like, well, I don't have this problem anymore. Clearly there's something to that. And then when you look around a little more and you're seeing reports come out of certain things that are in so many of our cosmetic products. Um, I just know too, like growing up on a farm just gives me a really unique perspective when talking about just um, some of the byproducts from animals, because I saw the rendering truck come to my house and take pigs away or now cows away. And then a lot of that is actually some of like the number one consumers of some of the things that come off of that is like the cosmetic industry, which is disgusting. Or like whey protein is just basically scraped off the top of a boiled down pot. Yep. That's a pretty nasty way to think about it. But when you're not using plant-based things, that's the kind of stuff you're running into. And I just, I don't think people know that. Mm-hmm. at all. Wow, Jesse, thank you. I, I have a question for you. What is one product that you can think about that you have that really positively impacts somebody's health and wellness? What product would that be? I would say our Digestion Plus. It's a prebiotic and a probiotic all in one. And that just your gut is kind of like the second brain of your body. That's where so much happens. When your gut's upset, I mean, think about it. When your gut's upset, your mood's affected, how you act is affected, everything else. And I know too, just from then my actual gut issues with being a little gluten intolerant and things like that. Once I started having that every day and cleaning up what I ate, I noticed a huge difference in how I felt. I mean, even just like some clouded thinking, I've had just issues with that too because of other things. But once I kind of got my gut on track, everything spiraled from there. My skin I mean, this winter I've had some flare ups when it's been like, feels like negative 50 because that's ridiculous. My skin was a little affected, but once I kind of trained my gut and got that in check, I haven't had those issues either. So I would say by and large, that right there is one thing I would never run out of. I have two extra boxes in my cupboard. When I get sick, I double up on it. It just really helps just the entire body um, work well. So do you have a lot of your clients uh, come back to you and say, Jesse, this product really helped my digestion. You know, do you get a lot of people with positive? When I've had people go through and use those things, people have noticed a huge difference. Um, Some people have, they don't necessarily use as much of everything else um, as before, but that's kind of a staple that a lot of people notice. Like that one definitely helps me feel a lot better. I'm kind of curious, how quick, how quick do they experience a difference? I, a couple of weeks, honestly, some people a little faster if they really were not putting a lot of good in before. I know I, when I kind of really sat down and looked, it took me a good couple of weeks of just like consistent use um, after I kind of got started on those things. Mm. About two weeks. That's awesome. I think so many people forget what it's like to not be bloated because they are constantly sick and in pain that your body stops like alerting you to it as intensely because you're just always feeling that way. So um, that's so interesting that even within a couple of weeks of using something, that's a pretty quick turnaround. You know what it's trying to do. So I think too, it just also makes you that much more conscious of um, like, if I know I shouldn't be eating gluten, like I just don't do it. Like it really, a big philosophy of of ours is to find out what doesn't serve you well. And so then you just don't eat it. One we kind of really recommend to cut out is dairy. Well, dairy, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I phase it out and I phase it back in and I didn't notice any differences. So I will have a small amount of dairy, but I do know now if I even have, I mean, if we go out and we have pizza and beer, I am not going to feel good for a couple of days after that. Um, which is hard for me because we are both very social people. So we like to be out with everybody, but once you kind of tune into that, I think people realize, like, why would I be miserable for a week and a half over, I mean, two hours of fun, essentially, when it's that type of thing? Yeah. And that's to realize that, too. Yeah. I was just going to say, that's such a different paradigm than we think about diet culture when it's all about deprivation. This is not thinking about deprivation at all. It's like, how does this affect you? If it doesn't affect you, 
fine. If it does affect you, yep. don't do it. And I think that's no what kind of, yeah, that's what drew me in a little bit more too, is just, you weren't like, well, you have to do this and you basically starve yourself. Um, I think a lot of people think that when they think of like shakes and that type of stuff, it kind of gets negative really quick, but that has definitely like our culture just doesn't work that way, I guess. Yeah. I, I'm really curious, like you've seen people, you've done talks now, you've been out there talking about these products and even people, when they see the benefit, they don't always invest in the products or programs. So I'm curious, what do you think makes people reluctant to change what they're doing, even if they can potentially see some of the benefits? I think, and I would say from my perspective and just people I've watched, um, it is dedication to change how you've done things your whole life. I mean, I didn't, I'm lucky I started when I was closer to like 27. <laughs> um, a lot of people are older than that. But it is hard work sometimes to meal prep on Sunday. It is hard work to go to the grocery store and have to look through and find the veggies that you have on your list or see if they have um, ingredients that you shouldn't be having on the back of the box. That all takes time and is hard work. But I think that is something then that stops people sometimes because they think they don't have the time for it when really I am just a big believer. I, and Alex can attest to this, I do not feel bad for people. Um, I do, if you truly, I should feel bad for you. But like when you say, I don't have time, I'm too busy. That just, we can't fit that in our life. Like, nope, you make that time somewhere. Um, I get it. I teach floor elementary special ed and sometimes by 9am I want to pull my hair out. So if I can go home from a long day and right now we're calving, so it's a busy time of year around our house too. And just find that I think time and commitment are just a huge and just having to change your attitude toward it. Cause we have been told so much for so long. Um, I think those are some of the biggest factors for that. If that makes any sense. Totally. The mindset around it is huge. We can find yeah. any excuse in the book to not do something for ourselves versus if we would look at, you know, if a friend called us up and needed something, we would make that time for that person. So we've got to put ourselves a little bit higher on that list. Exactly. And I think we're in a culture right now too, where like women just make themselves busy. So you can like say you're busy. I remember I was reading an article and it's like, when we greet each other now, we don't even like stop and just talk. It's like, Oh my God, I'm doing this, this, and this. Like everyone wants to like break up their busyness. And that has been hard for me to change because I am a go, go, go person. But I now like take that time and I've always loved grocery shopping. I don't know why I think it's because it's like an escape and it's just quiet sometimes. But I just now, like, maybe that's part of your self-love for the day is actually getting good groceries that will fill you up and be worthwhile to what you're trying to achieve. Definitely. I, I love that. And I'm curious, what, how do you think we start to call other women out on that? Because, like, the mar I call it the martyrdom syndrome, but it's the same. It's like, well, yep. you're busy. I had to pick my kids up from karate and take them to soccer. And then I had to bake 20,000 pies for the church bake sale. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, one up. One <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, how, what, what do you think we could potentially do instead to discourage each other in a kind way to release that lifestyle? Because it's not serving any of us. No. And I think we're all guilty of it at some point. Um, yeah. We have a book club here at school, um, sometimes a couple times a year. And I did this one. It was the Energy Bus by, is it John Gordon, I think? We mm -hmm. did that this time, though. And we were talking about how we all worked through our lunch. And I was just like, nope, not anymore. I used to do that. And now, like, I will turn off my office light and I will put my feet up under my desk and I will enjoy my lunch. And it's like taking those baby steps and being like, you don't have to do that. Like you can make copies some other time, put them in quick while you're in the bathroom. Um, and two, I think we have to get just get used to of that work will be there tomorrow. Go home. And just like, just those simple things of, and does it really matter if it is or not? I mean, some of this stuff that we're forcing ourselves to do because we feel like it matters just doesn't. And I will say, I do think my boyfriend is just such a more laid back person than I will ever be. I know I drive him nuts with my like wound tightness and he drives me nuts with his laid back. But there were times when we first started dating, I would be like, but I have to get the laundry done before you do this. And he's like, who gives a shit? We have clean clothes. <laughs> like you can do that tomorrow. I don't care. Like we'll get through it. And so that just like small dripping, I'm sure I still seem very high strung, but I am so much more relaxed than I was before coming into this. So 
when you change your health, you really start to change everything in your life. You kind of do though. And I'm sure I'm just a not, I mean, I'm sure other people from college are like, holy cow, I cannot believe she's like, or just like the positive stuff that I try to share some of that. I'm sure it's just (laughs) not that like I was an angry mean person, but I just was like, this is dumb. I'm not going to sit here and like, (laughs) (laughs) Mm, that's awesome. I'm, I'm curious, do you have any other final thoughts or words to share with people who may be like you, who may be a little on the skeptical side and they want to dip their toe in? Like, what are, what are any final thoughts you have to share with our listeners? I just would totally encourage people to take those opportunities and check things out. Even just, I mean, anything that presents itself, I really try to um, just to like be on life's adventure. You just don't know where anything is going to take you. Um, even just me being coming part of an Arvine team, I never would have met. There's like probably 20 ladies who are part of my life now and who are my cheerleaders who I never would have known had I not said yes to Aaron, even when I was thinking like, oh my God, Dean's going to freak out when I come home and I'm like, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have these people in my life who I'm having a bad day and they cheer me on or they have the recipe ideas. I've connected with other women who aren't even a client of mine just in a deeper way because I've been sharing this stuff. And now I know a gal who we kind of Snapchat or message a, quite a bit more now of just like, if she's working out, like I sent her like the little applause hands or the fire, like get it, like go after it. And that's so, I think too, finding that and just being able to be happy for other people and cheer them on and what they're doing, um, regardless of how it affects you. Like there's totally room for all of us to be at the top. And I don't know why we have to kind of make it so it's not again, me 10 years ago would have been like, no, like, screw you, dude, I'm doing this. But it's just so much more fun when you start to embrace what other people do. That's really cool. Because then you learn so much more about yourself. And I think like life is so much more fun with people involved. Like nobody wants to sit home by themselves. Even if you are like an introverted person, you still got to talk to people. So it's just so much better when it's like happy people who wants to talk to somebody not happy with things or crappy all the time. I think that would just be my last tidbit of, and just like seize it, see what happens. Like it could be really great. It could not work out, but if you're working on making yourself better, did you really waste time doing that in the end? I guess. That's awesome. That's so awesome. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us this week on the Second Nature Show. It was a pleasure to have you. And for those viewers who are like, dang, I need some Arbonne products in my life. Where can they get a hold of you? How can they talk to you? How can they reach out to you? I have a Facebook page and Instagram page, and that would probably be the easiest. Mm -hmm. Um, My Facebook page is my first and last name, and I'll spell those because they're kind of hard. But it's Jesse J-E-S-I-E, so just one S. And then Rosenmeyer, R-O-S-E-N-M-E-Y-E-R with a hyphen and then making the most of it all. And then my Instagram is just making the most of it all. Um, I just thought that was a really good theme for everything. So I kind of went with that. Awesome. I love that. That's beautiful. Dom, where can our listeners find and follow you? They can follow me on coachdomcampbell.com. Awesome. And Donna, what about you? Anna at designstakecoaching.com and designstakecoaching.com website. Awesome. And you can find and follow me at Fully Aligned Coaching on Facebook or at Alex the Fully Aligned Coach on Instagram. And you can find and follow us on The Second Nature Show on Facebook or by emailing the Second Nature Show at gmail.com. And if you are interested or know someone who'd be interested in being a guest, reach out to us. We would love to keep expanding this conversation and seeing what different types of wellness practitioners and people involved in health and wellness are out there because this is a job that we need many people working in, right? To really improve the health and wellness of the planet, it's going to be a team sport. So the more people who we can interview on this show and spread the good word, we'd really be happy to do that. And make sure you show up next Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And remember, if you change your habits, you can change your life. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.